If you're sitting down to watch your favorite TV show, you'll probably have your dinner in front of you as well. Well, that convenience is likely due to a few people you may not have ever even heard of. Like all good inventions, the ability to enjoy your dinner while watching TV started out as a mistake. This is All Request History. If you've ever wondered about the history of, well, anything, you're in the right place. Subscribe here and leave your comment and your request will be history. Thanks this time to Caitlin Evans for requesting the history of the TV dinner. Since caveman days, humans have discovered that their fresh kill couldn't be eaten all in one sitting, even if you were feeding a whole cave full of people. They learned to freeze the meats that could spoil and save them for later. For centuries, freezing food was helpful, but a tedious process using large blocks of ice harvested from ponds and lakes and stored in small barn or an ice house with sawdust and hay. In 1802, Thomas Moore, a Philadelphia farmer, created a smaller convenient ice box. It was a tin tub placed in a cedar wooden box and then packed with ice. It kept food frozen for a very long time. He was granted a patent and by 1840, there was an ice box in almost every home. In the 19th century, during the industrial age, mechanical refrigeration was invented. This brought frozen foods to a whole new level. The ongoing problem with freezing foods, however, was that crystallization and thawing would dry out food and it would lose most of its flavor. In 1925, Clarence Birdseye invented the flash freezing method that would preserve the frozen food's texture, flavor, and nutritional value. This invention made it possible to mass produce foods to be frozen, packaged, and sold commercially. In the 1940s, a man named William Maxson, by mistake, grew more cauliflower on his farm than he could sell. So he froze it and he discovered that it tasted okay when he thawed it out and heated it a year later. He experimented with other foods with some success and some failures. Maxson, however, was a Navy man and he found success in creating sky plates. It was a frozen meal that was heated on a plane in his DC-powered oven and soldiers could enjoy a hot meatloaf meal with veggies or franks and beans or even a veal cutlet while flying to their next deployment. In 1947, Pan Am's Airlines tried this system to see if they could make it commercially viable. Maxson died before it could gain any popularity. After his death, a few others tried their hand at the frozen dinner game. In 1948, a man named Jack Fisher developed the Friggy Dinner. He sold them at bars and pubs, but they did not become very popular. In 1949, two brothers from Pittsburgh created a frozen dinner that was almost a hit. The Bernstein brothers' frozen meals likely failed because they marketed their creation under the name One-Eyed Eskimo Dinners. It's Thanksgiving now, 1953, when Swanson Company in Omaha, Nebraska was planning on shipping their frozen turkeys to market. Someone overestimated the number of frozen birds hoping to be purchased, and after Thanksgiving, there were 260 tons of frozen turkeys packed in 10 railroad cars, idle and unsold. A Swanson salesman by the name of Jerry Thompson came up with a brilliant idea after just being served a meal on an airline flight on a metal tray. Maybe it was a Maxson sky plate. He ordered 5,000 aluminum trays and he formed a line of Swanson employees to carve out the turkeys, add gravy, scoop some cornbread, peas, and sweet potatoes on trays in an assembly line. They were flash frozen, packaged, and shipped to markets priced at 98 cents each. Thomas's bosses were a bit reluctant about its success, but they didn't have a lot of choices, and they also had 260 tons of leftover Thanksgiving turkey. It turned out that Jerry Thomas was more of a genius than they thought. He was either genius or motivated by a huge commission. The next year, the first year of production, 10 million frozen Swanson turkey dinners were sold. Now let's just say if Thompson got a standard 3% commission at 98 cents each, 10 million sold, that comes to... Let's just say he did very well in 1954. Eating dinner while watching TV became the norm. You know, a TV dinner. Swans had marketed them just a TV dinner. They even made the box look like a little TV. Their popularity grew throughout the 50s and 60s. They now became available in a variety of choices from meat and potatoes to Italian dishes and burgers. Frozen dinner makers started popping up and taking advantage of the craze. Banquet, Stouffer's, Hungry Man, and of course, Birdseye. 
Now, folks all over America could eat a hot meal while watching Gunsmoke and Dragnut and I Love Lucy. In the 70s, TV dinners became even more popular as families became busier, mostly because they started to finally realize that mom could go to work too. The Campbell's Soup Company took over Swanson and developed a way to add dessert to the meal like apple cobbler, cherry pie, or even brownies. In the 70s, the Hungry Man Dinner was marketed to burly men sitting in front of their Sunday football game and marketed bigger, beefier meals. In the 80s, though, people started focusing on less calories and healthier choices. Now that there was a microwave in every kitchen in America, others popped up like Lean Cuisine, Smart Ones, and Weight Watchers who offered lower calorie options. In the 90s, calorie counting became less important and healthy choices like protein and veggies were the king. The TV dinner got a makeover and offered meals with more of a Mediterranean style feel with very few carbs. Diet programs like Nutrisystems and Weight Watchers offered meals on their point-based system. Parents also found that frozen dinners was a great way to make sure the kids were eating their dinner by making their own meals. Chicken nuggets, pizza, and kid cuisine were popular choices. The early 2000s saw a decline in the classic TV dinner. Hungry Man and Swanson were no longer even available, and people started making better food choices, realizing that fresh cooked dinner at home was likely the best meal choice. The 2020 COVID-19 pandemic created new sales wave as People were stuck at home and they could only take advantage of grocery delivery or curbside pickup. The TV dinner has now become still sitting in front of your TV show, probably streaming, but now eating a healthy, quick prepared box type meal from Home Chef, Factor, HelloFresh, or maybe Blue Apron. In fact, I hope you're enjoying YouTube right now while having a healthy snack. And if you are, you can thank Thomas Moore, William Saxon, Jack Fisher, Clarence Birdseye, and Jerry Thomas during a failed Thanksgiving turkey estimate. Well, thanks for checking in. Are you curious? Subscribe here, leave your request in the comments, and the next video could be your history request.